Welcome to Application Analysis, Application Ratios, with your host, me, Kane Daniel. In this tutorial, we will be covering the following topics. Loan to Value, or LTV, Gross Debt Service, or GDS, and Total Debt Service, or TDS. So, let's get started. The mortgage agent has three basic ratios that must be applied to every potential transaction. The loan to value or LTV, the gross debt service ratio or GDS, and the total debts service ratio or TDS. The LTV is used to determine the maximum loan possible on the property, while the GDS and TDS ratios determine if the client can afford the loan. The lender will base the decision on the loan amount based on the lower of the LTV, GDS, or TDS. While the majority of lenders will use all three of these ratios, the LTV and TDS are typically used in subprime and private mortgage transactions, excluding the GDS. In this section, the mortgage agent will be introduced to these three ratios and taught how to apply them in a mortgage transaction. Section 1, Loan to Value. The loan to value is the amount of the loan in dollars in relation to the value of the property in dollars. This is then expressed as a percentage and is typically rounded off to two decimal places, unless it's an exact number. For example, if the loan to value is exactly 90%, there is no need to show any decimal places. Lenders use this ratio to determine the maximum loan amount for a given property based on specific type of loan product that is offered by the lender. There are two calculations when using the loan to value. The first is calculating the loan to value of a mortgage. The second is using the loan to value to determine a maximum mortgage amount. So let's look at how to calculate the loan to value of a first mortgage. In this scenario, a client would like the first mortgage in the amount of $270,000. The property he is purchasing is valued at $300,000. So how do we calculate the proposed first mortgage loan to value? Well, the solution is the proposed first mortgage amount divided by the property value all multiplied by 100. In this scenario, it'd be $270,000 divided by $300,000 multiplied by 100. This would equal 0 0.90 times 100, and therefore the loan to value would be 90%. Now let's take a look at how and why we converted decimal points to percentages. When you calculate a percentage, the decimal number must be multiplied by 100 in order to obtain the percentage. For example, 10 is 10% of 100. We can calculate this by dividing 10 by 100. This, however, equals 0 0.10. The answer is not 0 0.10. To convert the decimal to its percentage, you must then multiply it by 100. Therefore, 0 0.10 multiplied by 100 equals 10 and 10 becomes the percentage. To calculate the loan to value of a second mortgage, the mortgage agent must complete the same process, however he or she must include the first mortgage in the calculation. So, taking a look at the example on screen, a client has a first mortgage in the amount of $270,000, and he or she would like an additional $15,000 as a second mortgage in order to consolidate credit card debt. The property is already valued at $300,000, so how do we calculate the loan to value? Well, the loan to value equals the first mortgage amount plus the proposed second mortgage amount divided by the property value and then again multiplied by 100. In this case, the loan to value would therefore be $270,000 plus $15,000 divided by $300,000 multiplied again by 100, which leaves us at $285,000 divided by $300,000 multiplied again by 100 which would equate to 0.95 times 100 and thereby leaving us at a proposed loan to value of 95 percent. When using the loan to value to calculate a maximum mortgage amount, the mortgage agent needs to know the loan to value that is offered by the lender as well as the value of the property. The formula for determining the maximum mortgage amount using the loan to value calculation is as follows. So it's the maximum mortgage amount equals the loan to value divided by 100 multiplied by the property value. So, if we look at the example on screen, a borrower wishes to purchase a new home and has asked you to advise him as to what the amount of the down payment he requires. The purchase price of the home is 
and you have to determine that the borrower qualifies with a lender who offers a 95% loan to value maximum. So based on this information, we can follow the solution that the maximum mortgage amount equals 95% divided by 100 multiplied by the property value, which in this case is $400,000. If we go along, we can see the maximum mortgage amount would equal 0.95 times $400,000, and therefore the maximum mortgage amount would be $380,000. So based on this loan to value, we can understand that the client would need at least $20,000 as a down payment for this property. Section 2, Gross Debt Service, or GDS. The GDS is designed to determine if the potential borrower can afford the proposed mortgage payment based upon their income or combined income if there is more than one applicant. The GDS combines the cost that a potential borrower has regarding shelter and divides that cost by his or her gross income. So if we look at the how to calculate a gross debt service ratio, the GDS is calculated using the following equation. GDS equals PITH plus one half condo maintenance fees divided by the gross income and then multiplied by 100. The PITH stand represents the principal interest property taxes and property heat. It is important to note that when calculating heating costs, the mortgage industry uses a standard amount of $75 per month for heat on any property. Although heat does vary from property to property, this is a standard amount and is applied to all debt service ratio calculations. So let's look at an example of how to calculate a GDS. In this example on screen, Mr. Barlow wishes to purchase a home valued at $350,000. He has $87,500 as a down payment, leaving a required mortgage in the amount of $262,500. You have determined that his monthly mortgage payment will be $1,679.50. Since this is not a condominium, there is no maintenance fee. Mr. Borrower has an annual income of $77,500 and pays $3,100 per year in property taxes. So, what is the borrower's GDS? Well, I'm not going to go over the whole example here, but it is important to understand how the formula works and what the GDS means to you. It is important to note here that the maximum ratio that is typically in the mortgage industry is 32%. What this means is that 32% of a potential borrower's gross income may be used to service his or her shelter costs. So the GDS has one main purpose, to determine if the proposed mortgage payment is within the lender's maximum GDS ratio. In this case, we can see that it is because it's at 31.17%. Section 3, Total Debt Service, or TDS. Similar to the GDS, the TDS is designed to determine if the borrower can afford the potential mortgage payment. However, this calculation also includes all other debts that the borrower has. For a list of examples of these debts, please consult the manual on page 13. The TDS also has two main functions. It can be used to either pre-qualify the borrower by determining the maximum mortgage payment that the borrower can afford, or verify that the payment qualifies by determining if the potential mortgage payment falls within the lender's TDS ratio. Now that you know how to calculate a TDS, the following illustrates a scenario in which you must calculate the total debt service. The following can also be seen on pages 15 and 16 of the manual. I would encourage you now to uh, pause the presentation, read through this scenario, take any notes you might need, and then move on to the next slide. So we can see here that calculating the total debt service, or TDS, is pretty straightforward. Uh, these two people would have $2,099.59 in the proposed mortgage costs, plus $75 in heat, and then some additional costs, uh, car payments, student loans, as well as credit card payments, and then obviously they have their property taxes at 3100 per year. So we take this and divide it by their income and then multiply it by 100 in order to get the total debt service. In this case, if you do the calculations, it comes out to 38.28%, which means that Malik and Nancy did qualify for the mortgage uh, based on the lender's TDS requirement, which was 40%. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Please ensure that you read the chapter and that you complete the chapter review questions. Answers to those questions are at www.remic.ca.